Fire. Fire was humanity's first touch of innovative technologies. We learned to control fire to protect ourselves against cold, against the elements. But the story of human innovation doesn't stop there. 4000 BC, the wheel. 19th century, the light bulb, telephone. 20th century, the internet, automobiles, television, nuclear weapons. We probably shouldn't have done that. And we went to the moon. 21st century, supercomputers, quantum computing, nanotechnology. And that was just the first decade. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we live in a world built on innovation. And yet, most of us don't really know what truly really drives it. You see, a common belief is that freedom drives creative and innovative thinking. But if you'll indulge me today, I plan to challenge this very notion. To start off with a quote by Jonah Lara, the imagination is unleashed by constraints. You break out of the box by stepping into shackles. My name is Don Prescott, and I've spent the last four years understanding and learning how to build innovative solutions with the most limited of resources. Today, I run two startups, and I've won the Apple WWDC scholarship twice. You see, the human mind is an incredible invention of human biology. So complex that even today, science doesn't truly really know how it really works because it works in such funny little ways. Give it all the freedom in the world, and you will create nothing. But put it in a cage, suppress its vision, its colors, its sense of touch, and it will hallucinate a world that you never thought possible. The human mind is unleashed by constraints. You see, we all face problems. For some students, it's starting the assignment the day before it's due, and trying to figure out how you're going to fit six weeks of work into 24 hours. Father it's being broke, one that I can really relate to. And one thing that we all have in common is that we all react the same way. In an ideal world, that would be sitting down at the table and calmly discussing the outcome, but no. We all panic. Panic is what makes a limitation a limitation. Because when you're faced with problems with adversity, there are two ways you can react. You can panic, or you can innovate. Innovation is what makes a limitation no longer one, but as a foundation for better pursuits. You see, if I had a raging forest fire behind me and I had to cross a river full of crocodiles, panicking would be running through that river and coming out the other end half eaten. Whereas innovation would be taking a moment, looking around me, seeing a large branch, putting it across the river and building a bridge across. In both situations, the outcome is the same. You made it across the river, but in one, you came out a lot better. 13, the unlucky number. You see, Apollo 13 was a lunar mission to the moon by the US. And imagine being an astronaut. You're sitting in a tin can surrounded by nothing, space. The nearest star aside from the sun is a million miles away. Your knees are so crammed that they're stuck together and all of a sudden your oxygen tank goes boom. Your time is running out, your supply of oxygen is going. You don't know if you're gonna make it home. Houston, we've had a problem. You see, these astronauts they didn't panic, they didn't give up at that moment, no. Together with the people back home, they innovated. They figured out how to turn the remaining carbon dioxide filters into an apparatus that would let them have breathable air to make it back home. Because the situation called for it, because of the lives at stake, scientists were able to do in minutes what would have taken them hours, in hours what would have taken them days. In days what we've taken them months, they found a way to do the impossible because of the situation, because of the limitation and obstacle they were given. <coughs> now, this that example may seem a little bit out of that world, out, out of this world, because to relate with something that's happening millions of miles above us is hard. So I'm gonna bring it back down to something that all of us use. Twitter. I hope more, most of us use Twitter. There are many other social medias, but Twitter is something unique. There's a character limit imposed on every tweet you write. And so to an average person, they might look at that and say, oh, they're limiting what information we can put to one tweet. But the reality was that this character limitation created the effect of innovative summarization. Because 
People were forced to write the same amount of information with less characters. They found better ways to express themselves. They found ways to get to the point faster. They found better ways to deliver information. You see, in the 21st century, some of the most prominent innovators, entrepreneurs, they sit among us, they know how to turn a profit from limitations instead of panicking. Over here, you see some of the biggest companies today, Virgin, Apple, Google, Amazon. These are the founders behind some of the biggest companies today, all worth billions. But all these founders, they found a way to turn their adversities into a world-changing solution and product. This was me four years ago, taking a selfie with a laptop, being the innovative boy I was. And this is me four years later. You see, when I was 14, my greatest innovation was figuring out how else I could take a photo without using a phone. But now I've learned there are so many more things that we can do. You see, four years ago, I made a decision to myself in that I had a dream of where I wanted to be. For some, they want to be a superstar, some want to be a supermodel, some want to be a rock star, and some want to be the next Elon Musk. Yeah. <laughs> and I made a decision to take wherever I was, turn it to where I wanted to be, whatever it would cost, whatever it would take, whatever sacrifices, whatever time I had to spend doing it. And I made a list for myself. So some people have a bucket list. I had my own list, which I called 20 goals by 20. 20 things which I wanted to do before I reached the age of 20. So over here are three of the things on that list. Now, thanks to today, I can cross one more of that list. And I'm not yet on fours, but I've done two things on that list. Now, to me, Tim Cook was someone that I admired from a really young age because he's the CEO of one of my most favorite companies in the world, Apple. Meeting him was incredible. So this is me with a totally unplanned meeting with Tim Cook, where somehow I magically ended up dressing up like Steve Jobs. The same thing. <laughs> so yeah, me, I'm 18, but I'm still gunning for that position. One day, maybe I'll be next to Tim Cook. But whenever I tell this story to people, I realize that one thing I forget to mention is how hard it's been. because. So a lot of people, they feel that, oh, I have my life together, I know what I'm doing, I'm making it big, and the reality is that it hasn't been easy at all. It's been incredibly hard, and many times I have to put in way more hours than I should. I have to skip sleep, I have to spend the entire day working, keep going months without taking a day off, and some days I don't even know I'm gonna make it to the end. But, it's exactly moments like these when I'm struggling, when I'm faced with adversity, when I'm faced with the most limited resources that I get my best and most innovative ideas. For some, they get their best ideas when they're on the toilet. For me, this is how I get that. This is how I get my golden gooses, my eureka moments, my next big thing. You see, these are six of the biggest companies today. Apple, Google, Amazon, Harley Davidson, Disney, Hewlett Packard. And all of them started from garages. <laughs> when you look at this and you think about how they now function from skyscrapers, they have offices all around the world, there is no reason why nobody can build a world changing solution for what they have. You see, none of these founders over here let their limitations, they let their situation stop them from doing what they want to do. They let them build, help them to build better solutions. It's the case all around the world, from small startups in the US, like Trill, being able to use anonymous social networks to create safe spaces for people to express themselves. From startups back here in Singapore, like outside, turning slack resources in the community into ways to help each other. I myself am no stranger to this situation. A year ago, I was studying for an exam, and like most students, I was stressed out. And Doing, doing as best as you can isn't just the only thing. You are really, really want to get that A. And I was limited on time. I was struggling to really study. I wanted, really wanted to get an A, and I didn't really know what to do. But while I did panic a little, I also took the opportunity to think about what I could do with what I had. And one thing that I've always been really good at is building apps. 
I knew how to build apps, really good apps. I knew how to build it from the ground up. And so I took the moment. I went into Google. I spent a few weekends learning about cognitive behavioral psychology. And I used it to make an app that could make learning faster, easier for everyone. Faster. You see, all the founders we talked about today have something in common in that they didn't shy away from these obstacles, these limitations. They didn't say, I don't have enough money to do this. I don't have the time to do this. No, they let these obstacles, these limitations, cultivate the resourcefulness they needed to build better products, to build better companies. This is Steve Jobs when he was young, when the Macintosh was first being launched. Now, today people may make fun of the Mac, but back in the day, the Macintosh was one of the most innovative computers being released. You see, when they were designing the Macintosh, Steve Jobs was talking to Larry Kenyon, the head engineer of the Macintosh at the time, and he looked at Larry Kenyon and said, we're taking minutes to boot. Can you make the Macintosh boot 10 seconds faster? Larry Kenyon, being an engineer of his craft, he looked at Steve and said, that's impossible. We can't do that. We've already made it the best we can. But you see, to run one of the greatest companies in the world, means that you know stuff your employees don't. And he told Larry this. If 10 seconds could save a person's life, you would find a way. If you look at how many Macintosh we expect to sell this year, and we look at 10 seconds a day, in a year, that's 100 lifetimes. Now, some people might call Steve a horrible boss for forcing his employee to do something like that, but the reality was Larry Kenyon came back a few weeks later the Macintosh could boot 28 seconds faster than it could before. By imposing these limitations on his employees, he was able to create better and more innovative solutions to do the impossible. You see, to all of us here today, you need to stop thinking of all these obstacles as obstacles. Because if you were running a race, running towards the end of your life, and you let this be an obstacle, it's going to stop you. If you think of it as a hurdle, it's only motivating you to live higher than you had before. You need to let all these obstacles and limitations be the launch pad for your creative pursuits. You need to learn how to look at limitations differently. You need to stop panicking. You need to challenge when you see because you need to start looking at better solutions. When you start to challenge what is known, when you start to find better solutions, challenge the norms, you are like waves challenging the shore. And because when you do that, when you have the waves that challenge the shore, you challenge what is known, and you let your limitations be the cultivation for your innovation. Thank you very much.